Hello, I'm Jamie from the RSPB's Notes on Nature team. And in this short video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the many, many photos that we get sent every single week for use in our Nature's Home magazine, which is our magazine for members. Now we can't fit them all in, we get hundreds. So I'm trying to make sure that we give all the photos or as many as I can, um, the chance that they, they deserve to be showcased. So in this short video, we're gonna be looking at four or five of them. And joining me um, to have a look through some of these wonderful pictures that you've sent in is the environmentalist, Maya Rose Craig, who's on the RSPB England Advisory Committee. Hello, Maya Rose. Hi. Now, um, I'm, I've given the responsibility of choosing the photos to Maya Rose today. So which one shall we take a look at first? Um, the first one that I loved is this gorgeous picture of a song thrush with um, about five worms hanging out of its bill. Um, I just thought it was brilliant. Just, I'm, I'm not very good at photography. I'm not very good at wildlife photography. I'm very jealous of people who are. Um, but I am very appreciative of a good picture and um, I think it's brilliant. It almost looks like it's posing. It's turned its head to one side. Look at all my worms. Um, so this one was taken at Newborough Warren on Anglesey, and this is by Richard Stevenson. And Richard is part of um, the High Peak RSPB local group. Now, song thrushes aren't that common anymore, are they? No, they're struggling a bit. And I think also compared to other flashier birds, they're a bit underrated as well. I think they're gorgeous, perfect for pictures. Um, they are perfect for pictures and perfect for the for the ear as well because they've got that i mean they, they have the name song thrush they they have that beautiful song and they repeat little phrases and notes don't they three or four times so it's a nice one to listen out for as well as to look out for Absolutely. And actually, we have um, in, in my garden, we have a very loud pair of song thrushes and they're always, always singing. They wake me up in the morning. Um, but I always love hearing their song, even when it is at the crack of dawn. Yeah, they are one of the earliest singers in the morning. But just going back to what I was what we were saying earlier about the, the fact that they're in decline, I was going to mention that they are on the UK red list. So they are of conservation concern. And actually, um, interesting results in the Big Garden Bird Watch. So we've been doing this, this big uh, citizen science event for a few decades now. Uh, and they used to be in the top 10. They used to be one of the most common birds found in UK gardens. But this year, 2021, they were found in fewer than one in 10 gardens. So a bit of a shocking result there. They are really kind of disappearing. Um, and the theory behind that is that there's a loss of uh, habitat, loss of the places they need to nest and mm -hmm. a loss of the places they need to find food. So places like wet ditches where they need to find those, those delicious earthworms that that thrush has in its beak. Um, so we do need to make sure that they've got those places that they need to live. But a beautiful bird, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, yeah. And the picture is just gorgeous. So well done to the photographer. Uh, which one should we go for next? How about the dipper? Brilliant bird. I love dippers. Um, and have you seen many of those? Yes and no. I, I see them fairly regularly because there is one uh, fairly local to my house that's always on the same river, but they're not um, in great abundance around where I am, at least. So it's always very, very special when I see a dipper. I think they're just, yeah, brilliant birds. An unusual bird as well. So this, this picture is by John Northover. Thank you, John, for sending this one in. And, and the dipper is our only aquatic songbird. Uh, and I've heard that said a few times. And, and what that actually means is this bird goes into the water um, and sort of happily trots along the bottom of the, of the stream, doesn't it? It, it? As if it was on dry land. Yeah. And I remember as a kid, the first time that I saw them, I went to the, um, the bird identification book and sort of studied in very close detail the lovely illustration. And one of the things that really captured my imagination is that they have a second pair of see-through eyelids um, so that they can see as they're walking along the bottom of the water. Um, and I just thought, okay, yeah, basically, <laughs> evolution's goggles. Um, very cool very very cool bird so so look out for those and most i think we kind of think of this bird as being found on um sort of upland streams fast flowing water uh, i've seen footage of them sort of nesting behind waterfalls and things so that's there's very much a, a clear kind of habitat a, a, a picture that you have in your head of where you might see this bird 
Yeah, but I have to say, the um, without revealing too much, the site where I always go to see my dipper is on a tiny little stream running past a very crowded car park um, so you, in the middle of a city. So you can find them pretty much anywhere. So yeah, keep your eyes open. You never know, there could be a dipper somewhere near you on a stream. Um, yeah, thank you for choosing that one. That's a nice one. So um, let's go to picture number three. And what should we look at? Oh, the bullfinch. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Bullfinches, yeah, really. I've always loved bullfinches. I feel like I'm saying that about all the birds, but particularly bullfinches. Yeah, it's hard to have a favourite, isn't it? <laughs> um, so Jane Parrish took this one in her South Devon garden. And I think what this photo shows is how important it is to have things like dandelions, because that is a beak full of dandelion seeds. Mm. Yeah, and obviously as the months are getting hotter as well, just putting water out for birds. It doesn't have to be in the posh bird bath. Even putting out a little plate full of water could make the biggest difference to the birds in your garden. I love this picture partially because you have the reflection of the bullfinch in the water and it all looks very summery and lovely and peaceful. It is beautiful, it's a beautiful photo. Um, and I suppose as a seed eating bird, you are going to need water. You're, you're eating a lot of kind of dry food. I mean, a mouthful of dandelion seeds would make me desperately want a glass of water as well. Mm. I think some of my most exciting moments where I'm sort of in the many hours this year I've spent staring into my garden is when I've caught sort of a glimpse of that peach colored breast of the male and just the excitement that rises in me. Cause it's like, it's a bullfinch it's that sort of semi-regular visitor where you know they turn up but they're not there all the time so it's always always exciting I think that's pretty much what the bullfinch embodies for me just being totally thrilled every time I see one. Have you managed to tempt them onto a bird feeder? No not really there but there was a male sort of lingering around some of our more peaceful feeders because we have hundreds of them um but he never quite ventured onto them he was more just hanging out in the bushes but what i would love would be for there would be for there to be a um a local pair of bullfinches nesting in sort of the hedges around my house that's a dream. Well, hopefully, hopefully, um, in, in, you never know. One could pop up and decide that's the perfect habitat. They like a, a, a kind of a deep, thick hedge, I guess. Yeah, um, bullfinches love uh, deep hedges, which I think is one of the reasons that they're not super common in gardens compared to slightly more hardy species like blue tits and great tits. Um, but when they're around, they do stick around for a very long time sometimes. Um, so I guess to anyone who does see a bullfinch regularly, regularly, I'd say to treasure that. Absolutely. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to pick one. I'm going to pick one. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take my turn and pick one because I, I, there's one that really stands out to me, which I'm hoping you could tell me something about. So this is a lilac breasted roller. And I wanted to throw in a, a bird from overseas in here because I know you've done a bit of birding around the world. So I'm hoping you'll have seen one. So this picture is by Simon Smith. And Simon took this one, it, uh, one on safari in Botswana. So tell me, have you ever seen a lilac breasted roller? I have. Uh, like you said, I'm very lucky. I have um, done lots of, lots of birding overseas. Um, but rollers never fail to impress, I think. They're just so bright and so beautiful. And so um, I think unapologetic is a good way to describe them because they're quite often a bit annoying to the other birds and insects in the local vicinity, but I always think they're great. Um, and what I would love would be for a lilac breasted roller to sort of roll up in the UK um, to ha and to hang out for a while, but I'm not sure um, that's gonna be happening anytime soon. There's a European roller, is that right? There's slightly different colours, but also quite bright. Yes, all the all the rollers are very beautiful and there are all these different shades of purples and blues. And the European one is a bit more blue. Um, but there's something about the lilac on a bird, which I think it's because it's so unusual that I do think it's very pretty. OK, um, do you want to pick the last one? What, what's the last picture we're going to look at? Oh, let me have a look through. So hard to pick. There's so many nice ones. I might go for um, that picture of the Egyptian goose, actually. Yeah. Um, so, so this is this is lovely. This is this is by Jean Fitch, and it looks like it's 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 planning to go in the water, but it's just a nervous look around just to make sure it's safe. What what do what do you know about Egyptian geese? Um. Right. So in terms of sorry, it always comes back for me from, to my local patch. Um, 
And I remember as a kid, it was always very exciting when I saw an Egyptian goose. I remember writing it down in sort of the notebooks and the hides to say, I saw an Egyptian goose today. Um, these days, there is a resident goose that's always hanging out on the local lake. Um, and I know that most birders sort of overlook them a little bit, which I think is totally unfair. Like you can see all the different colours in this picture. I just think, again, they're brilliant looking birds. Most birds are when you start to really look at their plumage. Um, and Egyptian goose is definitely one of them. And um, I was trying to sort of read up about Egyptian geese before we had this chat. And I was reading that they are more closely related to um, there's large, large ducks, the shell ducks, than they are to geese. But then I think there's a bit of a blurred line in, in some areas when, when we've categorised birds as ducks or geese. So they mm. sort of sit in the middle, I think, don't they? Yeah, definitely. And I guess it's things like this that remind you that things don't necessarily fit into very sleek boxes. Um, I've never particularly thought it looks like a goose, except it's got a very angry look in its eye. <laughs> it's very characteristic of a goose. Um, but yeah, the, the name is quite possibly a bit misleading. I think we've come to the end of our time here. There are many more photos, but hopefully we'll get to have a look through some more another time. Thank you very much, My Rose, for helping me look through some of these. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been brilliant to look through these pictures and I'd love to do it again sometime. And if um, anyone else would like to send their photos in, please do. The email address is naturesome at rspb.org.uk. Thank you.